happening and today we are going to be talking about seeds and the 2024 spring gardening season so this month i have been organizing and reorganizing all of my seeds i have about five of these in various colors um this is just my tomato and peppers <laughs> seed um container which is actually a photo storage unit and i'll leave the descriptions up here if you guys want to actually get these for yourself Retail at forty dollars. I only actually spent ten dollars on them because I am not buying anything retail. These were plants, but anyway. So uh, we've been spending the last month and a half just going over my beautiful seeds, and taking a walk in the garden, and taking a look at old gardening videos, just trying to like get back into the mindset of like the gardening season and what I want to plant this year and what I don't want to plant this year. Um, <laughs> if there was a theme for the gardening season, it would be beauty and functionality. So instead of growing eight varieties of peppers, we only grow the ones we actually eat. Instead of growing 80 varieties of tomatoes, only grow the ones that I really like for sauce, so on and so forth. So within this video, I'll be discussing with you guys exactly what types of seeds I will be growing this year, the categories of the different types of plants I will be growing. And then also, um, it's also germination season as well. So I will be starting my tomatoes and my peppers and some of my salad greens this month. And I'll be showing you guys that video as well next week. So if you are interested in, to, well, at least today, and what I will be growing for the 2024 gardening season, then stay tuned and I'll show you guys um, the new seeds I found <laughs> and the garden organization as well. So stay tuned. All right, so this is actually what I've been playing. Well, I've actually made this two years ago. And what this diagram is um, referring to is actually a physical layout um, of my garden space. And so um, I do like to craft and create things. So this is nothing but like just um, some, like some, I guess some poster paper I got at the dollar store. Everything I got at the dollar store. And I literally just went outside and just started mapping the backyard out. So here we have the elderberry patch, the blackberry patch. These little black things here we have um, where rain barrels should be should be not always they're not here yet um but there should be one here and one here we have the strawberry the raised strawberry bed we have the raspberries the mole and the comfrey um the asparagus patch there are fig tree and there's a persimmon here that i haven't added yet but i need to add so this is basically the perennial garden here um over here we have two blueberry bushes um that are here and then we have our large raised bed which i literally grow nothing in the salad greens and uh, winter greens so and there's actually some small measurements on the side as well, because initially when I created this, um, I had the raised beds, but I, I didn't quite know how much of what I can fit within the beds. That took some time. So I literally went out with a tape measure and just measured the entirety of the beds. Like this one here are like 15 feet. I think this one here is 20 feet, literally the long. But, um, and then over observation of what I grew, I can estimate what I could grow in this space. So I know that I can grow two large determinate tomatoes here. I know that I can grow three determinate tomatoes here before we get to a shaded spot, which is perfect for a pepper. I know I can grow four to five indeterminate tomatoes in this 15 foot bed. I can also grow a wide variety of squash. Um, I can also interplant some basil. And in the event that you're wondering, these little things tomorrow, I actually made hundreds of these and they're nothing more than laminated construction paper. And then on the back, there's some little Velcro straps that I literally got from like, well, Velcro buttons that I got from the dollar store. And so I can just stick these here. Um, I can take them off if I don't really want them here. But it does allow for me to have a visual of where I want to put certain things. This is the thought process. Let me know what you guys, what you guys actually use as well. Do you use something similar to this? I have a friend that actually uses a notebook and just writes things down. Um, or like I said, I've seen a lot of people that actually do the computer version of this. So. Let me know what you do to actually plan out your, um, your gardening space before you purchase any seeds or before you germinate any plants. Now for the seeds that I will be growing this year, that I'm very excited about, I do have them separated into different categories, although some have more selections than others. Um, over in this section, I do have all of my tomatoes. So this one right here, this section here, which is the only tomato in this section, um, only tomato in the section is actually going to be my large tomatoes or the tomatoes that I know will produce two pounders because it is very exciting to be in the garden and see like a two to three pound tomato. And a Lincoln tomatoes actually produce very well in my garden space. The plants seem almost disease resistant, being an heirloom. 
Um, and it just makes really grand tomatoes. I mean, the plants survived a long time, even outside of some of my paste tomatoes. And they also make good paste tomatoes. So, Abe Lincoln's, that's the first category. It's just large tomato. Um, second category is actually um, my pole tomatoes, or the tomatoes that I use for like salads over the summer, as well as dried uh, tomatoes over the winter to make tomato paste. Um, Last year, I actually grew sun sugar tomatoes. I think I got these seeds from Johnny's. Um, they were delicious. Not only was the plant very, very healthy throughout the entire year, but um, the tomatoes themselves were delicious. And these were the tomatoes that I used for actually dried tomatoes to make my tomato paste um, over the winter for spaghettis and soups. Um, the next category is actually my paste tomatoes or the tomatoes that work really, really well for um, canning for spaghetti sauces. And... I'm leaning more towards Amish Pace and um, San Marzano, just because I've grown these for three years. The seeds are very reliable. I've actually saved seeds from both of these, and the plants did very, very well last year. Specifically Amish Pace. Amish Pace actually get huge. I've had a few Amish Pace that were at least one pound. Um, just huge tomatoes. We just have our, um, our wild cards. So I have two categories, two rows for wild cards, just because... It is nice to have beauty in the garden as well, not just functionality. I'm moving towards functionality this year just because I have limited space for germination. But I would like to grow a tomato, not specifically because it is delicious, but because I like seeing it. So here's our contender. So one of these just for a pop of color. Probably going to go more towards the Kellogg's breakfast because I know that tomato. Um, although I'm very excited to grow the witchies just because Jess from Roots and Refuge grows them, if I'm honest. <laughs> And probably leaning more towards Cherokee ver Purple versus Black Beauty. I've heard Black Beauties are beautiful to look at, but I heard they're not as tasty as the Cherokee Purple. So I might actually stick with what I know for that. And then from um, Homestead Heart, I got these two tomatoes here. This one is the Mushroom Basket Tomato. And I have a, quite a few, I have a few seeds from this. I'm thinking about growing these. Um, and this is actually Kellogg's Breakfast. These were the original seeds. Um, because the mushroom baskets just look beautiful with the like the ridges in the tomatoes. But um, you have to be cautious with ridge tomatoes because sometimes you get half ripening with the tomatoes. You might have bugs and so it just gets kind of gross um, if you don't pick them properly. So I want to grow them just to be able to see how they would look. But I'm kind of on the fence because like as mentioned, I don't have a lot of space to germinate tomatoes. And I don't want to germinate anything that might get a little buggy as the season progresses. So just for a pop of color, um, we're probably looking more so at the Kellogg's breath. Well, Dr. Witchies. Grew these last season. So Dr. Witchies and probably Cherokee Purple um, as the contenders for the, um, the wild cards for this year. Although let me know what you think about the mushroom basket. Has anyone grown these and have you had bug issues with these plants, with these seeds or with these plants? And if you've grown Black Beauty, how did you like the taste? Um, so I can get some other opinions. The peppers, um, I do know that like in terms of what I used over the winter and also just the flavor components, um, I do actually like the, let's see, the sun, the sugar rush reds are delicious, but they're only really delicious if they actually turn red. And with peppers, it's a little difficult to, um, it's just a little difficult, like with these, it took a long time for them to mature, even with the consistency of like all of the um, compost that I was feeding these plants. Um, so I'm kind of hesitant about growing too many of these. I might actually put them in a bucket on the porch, but it does have a really great flavor if they're allowed to ripen and de be dehydrated. So the sun sugar, the sugar rush reds, I've grown these for two years and they're, it's a wonderful addition to any garden and the plant is gorgeous when they're all ripened. For the raised beds and the garden space itself, we'll be growing our scarlet kale, our dinosaur kale, our marble of the Four Seasons lettuce, which is a butterhead type lettuce, the mizuna, which is kind of spicy, our merlot lettuce, which is just a color pop, but it's a regular lettuce, and then our Paris Island lettuce. Um, so that'll be what we will be growing um, this year in the raised bed. And then spread throughout, we'll have our basils. So we have our, our cinnamon basil, uh, Genoverse basil, I don't know how to pronounce that, Thai sweet basil, Sam queen basil, which is just 
like aroma, like it's heavenly for like teas and stuff. And then our lettuce leaf basil for like summer wraps. So that, those are the seeds for the garden space. All of our lettuces. Um, if I was completely honest, these are quite beautiful. The, the rattles, the asparagus beans are quite beautiful to grow. But these are kind of similar to me to the dragon tongue bush beans, just in the way they would look. That's those spotted, those spotted purple here. And the reviews on Baker Creek actually said that these were actually pretty tasty. Um, even on the back, it just says that they're popular in soups and will take heat and humidity, both of which we get in access, like um, come July, August in Ohio. And then you do have your own homestead, which actually were rated better in taste than the rattlesnake beans. Um, it says very early for pole types, large pods, and great flavor. And I don't actually want to mix these up just because I want to save some seeds. So if I had to choose, I probably would go with the rattlesnake pole beans just early spring. Or maybe these early spring because they, they produce early. So go with these early spring. And then when they start to fizzle out, then go back and maybe um, plant the asparagus bean. Just because if you plant pole beans on the trellis, you're going to have a freezer full of just frozen beans. So I don't really want any more beans to just freeze, but just for the like the appeal and maybe late summer. These are the uh, winter and summer squashes for spring of 2020, 2024. And then this year I only have space for three to four cucumber plants, maybe three. Um, be mindful, I've never had a cucumber grown really, but... Um, if I were to do it, it definitely would not be Mexican sour gherkins, although how cute are they? I've heard they take over and just like consume garden spaces. So this would be something I would I would grow probably instead of growing pole tomatoes or cherry tomatoes just because um it'll I will grow these on a trellis. Um but I don't want to grow these this year. The only real thing I can see of growing these is that you can pickle them as small cucumbers or small pickles and I just I don't want to, <laughs> but I just think they're cute. I just had to get the seeds. Although, if you can hear that, all of the seeds in this pack are just right at the tip. They do not give you a lot. Um, so if you ever do grow these, make sure that you grow enough to save seeds because you're not going to get a lot in here. But they're just cute to have. I just wanted to own the seeds, but I don't know if when I'll grow these. But these I got from Seed Savers. Puna Kia Akira Cucumber which are supposed to be um, resistant to a lot of the um, disease resistance. Um, and they're also supposed to not be necessarily resistant to the squash vine borer or to the cucumber beetles, but they're supposed to be able to survive through them. And so I want to grow these just to, to see whether or not they will actually be viable for Zone 6B Ohio. Um, these are just base level cucumbers. So I do want to grow at least one plant of these just because they're cucumbers. And then Armenian cucumbers are supposed to be disease resistant as well. Well, these are not actually a cucumber. These are melon, but you can grow them. If you pick them early, you can pick them as a cucumber. They're supposed to be more resistant. Um, and if they if they grow better <laughs> than any of the other varieties I've tried, then I will work with them. So I'm hopeful that I can grow cucumbers and melons. But as mentioned, I've never had any success. If you are in Ohio, zone 6B, um, and you've had success with cucumbers and melons, please let me know what you do because I have never had success with these plants ever these will be the at least the okra which have beautiful flowers unto themselves as well as the other flowers that will be growing in the garden space this year all right so thank you guys so much for watching um i hope that i well the different seeds i have inspired you to maybe um <laughs> not go out and buy new seeds as we all know that there's a problem like we have all of the seeds in the world and we will still go out and buy more seeds because it's a plant especially with all of the beautiful catalogs coming in but I hope that I didn't encourage you to buy more seeds, unless you're a new gardener and you need them. <laughs> but more so to be a little more selective in the seed types you're growing. Um, I'm personally a stay-at-home mom, um, and I also homeschool. But I know that even people that are working, um, people that have a bunch of kids, whatever, we all have busy lives. And so um, while we love gardening, and some of us have actually made a, uh, a career out of gardening, we don't have a whole lot of time to be babying 8 million plants. And so I do hope that... Um, it has inspired you to maybe think more strategically about what it is you want to grow in your garden, what it is that your family actually loves eating, and designate some of your space towards that. So I hope that you have your own ideas of what you would like to see in your garden. This is the perfect time to actually think about that now. For those of us who are still not yet planting in the ground, it does give us the benefit of being able to, to scale down and, and, 
and focus on health and vitality versus growing as many seed varieties as humanly possible. But I digress. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have anything to add or anything you would like to say about your own gardens or anything you would like to see, um, definitely drop a comment in the comments below and let me know what you're doing for March um, to prepare for the gardening season. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and you have a great day. Peace.